across Wisconsin from Civic Media. This is Up North News Radio. Now, live from our Lake Wissota studio, here's the founding editor of Up North News, Pat Brightlow. Hey there, Wisconsin. Good morning. It is 6.06 on this Monday morning, July 15th. A foggy but beautiful day to have you here up north, live from Lake Wissota. From wherever you're listening across the Civic Media Radio Network, through the app, social media, podcast, and more, we're going to skip our daily question. And we're going to get right into the events of this past weekend, especially with the former president already in Wisconsin and getting set for a Republican convention that kicks off today. Uh, Greg Bach is here in Waukesha. Brittany Merlot, Todd Alba, Kristen Lyerly, Selena Heller, Deborah Cronmiller of the League of Women Voters, and more will be joining us throughout the course of the morning. And if you'd like to have any reaction to what we're discussing today, which is obviously the uh, assassination attempt over the weekend, you can call us or text us 855-75-CIVIC, or you can leave a comment on social media, Facebook or YouTube. We'll say some nasty things about Twitter coming up in just a little bit. But again, call us or text us at 855-75-CIVIC if you'd like to be part of the conversation. Um, sports will be coming up as well. The Brewers managed to salvage one game from a series with the Nationals, and we are now in the All-Star break. And among our guests later this week, Rick Wilson of the Lincoln Project, Longtime political strategist Joe Trippi, they will each give us their view of the Republican convention, Republican convention that starts today in Milwaukee. The former president arrived in Milwaukee yesterday afternoon, and that's where we'll begin our coverage of the assassination attempt against him Saturday in Butler, Pennsylvania. An FBI official says that the relatives of the shooter, identified as Thomas Crooks, have been cooperating with authorities investigating the incident. Crooks was killed by Secret Service snipers shortly after getting off several shots with an AR-15, grazing Trump on the ear, killing a 50-year-old man in the audience, and wounding at least two others. Killed in the attack was the former chief of the local volunteer fire department, Corey Comparatori, who reportedly shielded his wife and daughter with his own body when the shots first rang out. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden extended their deepest condolences to the family. FBI Director Christopher Wray called the shooting, quote, an attack on democracy and said that no stone will be left unturned in the investigation. Officials say they believe the Trump rally shooter acted alone. They have not yet identified an ideology, but they are combing through his social media feeds and the shooter's weapons. So far, they have not found any threatening writing or social media posts. FBI officials said they discovered a suspicious device and diffused it. Biden said he has directed an independent review of the security at the rally on Saturday and also directed the Secret Service to review all security measures for this week's Republican National Convention. The FBI says they believe the AR-15 rifle the shooter used was legally purchased by the gunman's father, though it wasn't yet clear how the shooter gained access to the weapon and whether he took it without his father's knowledge. That's the latest overview. Let's look now at some of the reaction and provide some perspective. After all, as we say every day, there's a lot to unpack, and not all of it is neat and tidy. And I thought it might be right to start with basically some truths and make sure that the record is clear on where I believe most Americans stand on these recent events. Uh, number one is the most obvious. Ballots, not bullets. Period. Full stop. There is nothing in this campaign that justifies bloodshed. Are there passionate feelings? Yes. Is there passionate debate? Yes. There are major, life-altering issues that we are debating in this campaign and in this country. But emphasis on debating the issues. In the end, the voters deserve the final say. The voters deserve the final say in free and fair elections, not with gerrymandered maps, not with hijacked Supreme Court seats, not with voter obstruction, not with undermining the integrity of our already safe and secure elections. Leave it up to the voters, not to violence. 
in a fair fight, democracy and a civil society will always be the better choices. Uh, President Biden put it much more eloquently than I did. Here's a, a brief statement of what he had to say in an Oval Office address yesterday. Fellow Americans, I want to speak to you tonight about the need for us to lower the temperature in our politics. And to remember, while we may disagree, we are not enemies. We're neighbors, we're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we're our fellow Americans. We must stand together. Yesterday's shooting at Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania calls on all of us to take a step back, take stock of where we are, how we go forward from here. Uh, that's how you express it. Whatever your view of him, Joe Biden does not have to make any excuses for his past remarks. He's never had to say he was just joking about political violence. He sticks to the issues and says we should be unified when we can and let the voters vote when it's time. Which leads me to point number two. And I want to be clear about this. Violence has no place in our society. Neither does violent rhetoric. This is not a chicken and egg exercise where we don't know who went first. There is no both sides-ism to be had here. The record is clear on which people and which groups were talking first and most loudly with violent undertones or even explicit violence in their rhetoric. Normalizing that kind of fantasy talk releases a monster you cannot control. You may think it's only words. And you may think those words, if anything, would be used against your opponent when you're circulating pictures of Joe Biden being hogtied or you're laughing about Nancy Pelosi's husband being attacked. But let's be clear, anything that normalizes violence has the potential to bounce back against the very people who first started joking about violence. So let's try to say it again to the certain part of the population who needs to hear it most. Take it down a notch. It may lead to harm against someone you're joking about or against someone you support. It's not necessary. It's classless. It has no place in a peaceful society. Win on the merits of your arguments, not the crassness of your so-called jokes. Uh, to put it another way, some of the same people lashing out against Trump's critics didn't seem to have a problem making those jokes about Paul Pelosi getting his head beaten with a hammer. They didn't seem to have a problem wearing AR-15 lapel pins on the floor of Congress. And even as we condemn what happened to the former president, we're still waiting for similar condemnation of, say, the people who rioted and pillaged our capital instead of referring to them as tourists. That leads me to point number three. Calling out hate speech is not itself hate speech. I'm not going to dwell on this one because it should be self-evident. And frankly, anyone who disagrees with it is self-serving. So let me come to one final point. Now, can we talk about the guns? Because what happened Saturday was that a particularly big issue in our country, not just our campaign, but in our country, a particularly big issue reasserted itself and said, nobody cares about how a debate performance went. Nobody cares about the details of your tax plan. Nobody cares about any of these other issues if you're busy dodging bullets and dying or if bullets are whizzing past or into candidates for president and more. What bugs me isn't just the, the positions or the lapel pins. It's also the Christmas cards sent by members of Congress with family members, including children, holding AR-15s. It's the gun raffles. It's the unforgivable blocking of common sense safeguards that 80% of Americans favor. After the mass shooting of children in Uvalde, there was a proposal out there. It noted how pretty much every mass shooting involves an AR-15 and almost always involves young men. So maybe 
if some in Congress and in our legislatures can't work up the political will to ban AR-15 weapons of war from our streets, maybe they'd at least look at the reality of the current situation and raise the purchase age from 18 to 21 on AR-15s, as is the case with some other firearms currently. But that's not happening nearly fast enough. And that's how we came within a hair's breadth of a political assassination. It's the guns and the rhetoric that inspired their use. Plenty of people don't think anything can be done, don't think anything should be done. One of them was the person who was wounded over the weekend. Donald Trump said earlier this year after another school shooting, quote, it's just horrible, so surprising to see it here, but we have to get over it. We have to move forward. No, Donald Trump, we do not have to get over it. Trump's appointed justices on the U.S. Supreme Court voted to strike down a ban on bump stocks put in place after a gunman fired more than a thousand bullets into a crowd in Las Vegas, shooting hundreds and killing 60. Those 60 people cannot vote this November, nor can the many other victims of gun violence. And yet, if our leaders would allow a vote on AR-15 limits, bump stock limits, red flag laws, universal background checks, they'd pass overwhelmingly. So I'm sure that everything I just said is probably rage-inducing to some of Donald Trump's supporters who believe we should be right now self-confined to reverence and honor for a former president wounded by a bullet. But you know what? We're still going to talk about the guns. Because what happened Saturday could have been prevented, and it could have been prevented without harming a single law-abiding American who wants to own some sort of firearm for hunting, for shooting sports, or for defending themselves and their families and their homes. Those are all okay. They always have been. And nobody's talking about taking that away. Certainly not in this day and age. But weapons of war designed to be used on offense expressly for the taking of innocent life? Yeah, even with what happened Saturday, we're going to keep talking about it. Because Americans need to vote, and they need to vote like the lives of their children depend on it. And although some people won't take actions that could have prevented their own shooting and wounding, the rest of us would like to make them safer and to make ourselves safer in the process. That's what Americans do. We'll get into sports and uh, much more about the weekend and the Republican convention coming up, and certainly your calls or text if you'd like to share them as well. Wherever you're listening across Wisconsin on this Monday morning, July 15th, when you're here, you're up north. I'm Pat Reitlaw. bags last night pre-flight zero hour 9 a.m 620 now on this monday july 15th on this day in 1972 elton john landed his first number one album in the u.s as honky chateau blasted to the top thanks to rocket man his next five albums would also go to number one Today's history lesson is coming up in just a bit. Uh, first, a little bit of sports here uh, as we head into the All-Star break. Big game for the Brewers yesterday, who somehow had dropped the first two games of a series to the lowly Washington Nationals. Well, they made up for it yesterday. Willie Adamas had a home run, four RBIs. Garrett Mitchell homered for the first time in more than a year. William Contreras hit a homer. And the Milwaukee Brewers avoided a series sweep with a 9-3 victory over the Nationals on Sunday. For Adamas, uh, he hit his 15th of the year with two outs in the 8th to put Milwaukee up 9-3. He also doubled and singled twice. Garrett Mitchell had missed the first 84 games of the season with a fractured finger, so welcome back to him. With the win, the Brewers avoided what would have been their first four-game losing streak of the season, so they go into the All-Star break four and a half games ahead of second-place St. Louis, despite going 3-7 and seven in their last 10 games. Uh, one update from the injury list, Devin Williams, the reigning National League reliever of the year, made his first rehab appearance Sunday over the weekend, striking out all three batters he faced on 14 pitches and a veteran pitcher Dallas Keuchel who the Brewers picked up a couple of weeks ago uh, was cut free 
over the weekend. So here we are. It's time for the All-Star break. The uh, Brewers next play on Saturday at Minnesota against the Twins for two games. And then they're at Chicago to play the Cubs starting a week from today for three games. Uh, in the meantime, we should have the home run derby coming up today and then the all-star game tomorrow in arlington texas 623 right now um in terms of where we go from here after the shooting at the trump rally over the weekend uh i know where we should go we should be going just as president biden said to a place where we can come together and condemn violence Unfortunately for some Trump supporters, including sitting members of Congress, they have chosen only to ratchet up the rhetoric. Uh, thankfully, not every Republican feels that way. Here's former Governor Tommy Thompson, uh, some audio courtesy of CBS 58 in Milwaukee, uh, after Trump arrived at the Fister Hotel downtown. But what do you think about the unfortunate situation that happened just for oh, it's days so sad. You know, you know me, I, I'm a I'm a builder, and I love to bring people together. And we've become just too partisan and too political in this uh, in this country. But right now, Trump has a chance to bring the whole country together. After what took place last night, Trump can become the, the healer. The individual saying, they tried to take me out. I'm here. I'm a fighter. I'm going to fight for you. We're going to rebuild the United States. What could be fairer? What could be better? And so I'm really excited about it, what our chances are, what our opportunities are, and what's going to take place. Seems like this will be Okay, our so there you go. Bit. Former Governor Tommy Thompson uh, talking a bit about where we should go from here. And uh, I, I would hope that he's right. And really, it, it, this comes back to a point I was making last week about President Biden and post-debate and saying this is, this is one blip on, on the long slog of a presidential campaign until the next thing comes up and well welcome to the next thing like it or not but we're already at the next next thing which is the republican national convention and what kinds of things are going to be said here in wisconsin as those delegates gather as those vips get up on the podium and make their remarks there will be a lot of lionizing of Donald Trump and a lot of praise, and some of it you know, will be measured and some of it will be over the top. I just I worry about some of the assessment of blame that's going to be put there, not just for the sake of you know assessing blame, but for the sake of whether it's honest or not. And so we're, we're going to monitor all of that. We've got Todd Alba out there. He's going to be doing his noon to two show from the convention site this week. Civic Media News Director Terry Bell is on site there as well. Uh, we're going to have coverage all throughout the week. And you'll be able to follow that uh, on all of the shows here, including Up North News Radio early mornings, not just on the Civic Media Radio Network, Greg, but on Facebook and on YouTube and on the app and on podcast. But you know where you won't hear today's show, Greg? Where's that, Pat? That'd be Twitter. Why or not? Tw Twixer or whatever this dumpster fire is now called. <laughs> <sighs> Poor Greg got to, got to watch me uh, right from the get-go. Uh, get a little animated because I, I click a button every day that starts the live stream that sends this radio show to through, through these tubes called the interwebs uh, to places like you know, the Up North News Facebook page, the Up North News uh, YouTube page, the Civic Media uh, uh, Facebook page, the Bull Falls Radio in Wausau Facebook page. And also has always sent it to the Up North News Twitter site and the Bull Falls Radio Twitter site. But up comes a little note today that says, uh, we're sorry, uh, if you want to stream live on our platform from now on, you have to buy a premium subscription billionaire elon musk would like some more of your money please greg it, i see there's some cushions a little upholstered chair behind you yeah are there any coins underneath that cushion by <laughs> chance because that's the only way elon musk is getting any money out of us for this yeah I, it's not surprising i mean every time i try to do something there i'm like is it going to be premium only do i have to be premium to do this will i be able to be will i have to be premium in order to like mutant account or block someone or 
Yeah. It's they just they they want they want to push away everybody that's not going to want to pay to be there. And then Elon's going to eventually turn it into what he wants it to be, which is some kind of weird like AI oh, it's already media turning banking site. It's, it's so there's so so many financial posts. Look at all the ways that I I made money and you know just all kinds of weird solicitations uh and frankly some some things that you're quite certain you know probably lead to you know some shall we say cd content mm. um you know it's just the i know people say well twitter still works so i guess what elon did you know with all the cost cut cost cutting must not be so bad oh no it's it's very bad <laughs> That site is nothing like what it used no. to be. It is still so barely functional. It is my first car, which was a 73 Plymouth Fury, <laughs> which once upon a time was new off the showroom floor. But by the time I got it, it had been sitting in a junkyard for two years. The sun had baked a crack in the dashboard that I referred to as the San Andreas fault. You could see the pavement through some rusty spots on the floor. And that's that's what happened to Twitter. It used to be showroom new, but it is... It's a 73 Plymouth at this point. <laughs> and what a, soon, what a comparison. <laughs> soon soon will be gone. Uh, the, the weekend itself was very relaxing. The Northern Wisconsin State Fair wrapped up. We uh, traveled over to Minnesota to see some friends. We'll maybe get into that later. Uh, stopped at a place called the Monkey Bar in um, in Prescott, uh, just across from Hastings, Minnesota, where you can there's like some swing sets instead of bar stools. You can sit on like <laughs> swing sets instead and swing while you... Well, you have your pina colada. Oh, I would just case may fall be. over. We we joked about that because we'd been there once before years earlier. And we're like, how are we going to do with this? And I'm sure we looked a little tentative getting in our swing, but we, we managed. We did okay this time. <laughs> Next time, friend. I'm going to roll video just in case ridiculousness needs another uh, video clip here. We'll look to talk to Kristen Lyerly and uh, much more coming up on Up North News Radio for this Monday morning. Back in a bit. In fact, it's cold as hell. The Rolling Stones album Some Girls hit number one this day in 1978. Miss You and Shattered and Beast of Burden among the singles coming off of that one. Uh, here's somebody we miss because she's such a busy person, that whole running for Congress thing. But uh, our friend who joins us Monday mornings, Dr. Kristen Lyerly, joining us from uh, uh, kind of an undisclosed location up in northern Wisconsin. And I don't say undisclosed because it's not, I don't see all the, the diplomas and the accolades and the family photos. I see bright sunshine. I see green. I see a beautiful... I see a beautiful community up north. Which community might we be in today? I am in beautiful downtown Eagle River, and oh. it is even better than I remembered. Oh, it's it's so flipping gorgeous up there. It just is. It's it's fantastic. We're at this little park in the middle of town that's been here for, what, two years now. It's a Rotary Club project. Mm -hmm. There's free Wi-Fi. There are these picnic tables. It's a community gathering place. This is the reason that people think of Wisconsin as the place to go in the summer because of beautiful little towns like Eagle River. Um, without a doubt. I mean, look, we're not, we're not going to pick a best example of up north. We don't, you know, between Manaqua and, you know, Hayward and all, all, all of our friends all over the place. But it, it's, a lo it's a long list of places tied for number one. And if Eagle River isn't on your list, then your list is wrong. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, that's, that's basically it. So good. Well, I'm, I'm sure you're having a lot of fun up there. I went into the break talking about being on a, a road trip over the weekend, and we decided to take the back roads uh, heading to Northfield, Minnesota. So we took, instead of 94 over to the cities and down, we took 29. And so when you come out of Menominee, it, it takes you all through, you know, the Knapp Hill area and then down to Prescott. And, and um, in Prescott, they have this place called the Monkey Bar where, you know, they have some swings set up instead of bar stools. And you, you sit on the swings while you're at the bar, which, um, it, you know, depressingly causes you to think about those things when you get into that swing at age 60 compared to, <laughs> you know... 38 or 40 or whenever I climbed in that last time around last time we passed through, but we, we were in there, we got there just before 
one of a few rounds of thunderstorms came through and it's 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 outdoors but it's covered you know i mean there's the 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 regular indoor bar Mm -hmm. and then there's this large patio with a really good protective covering and so we were there at the outside bar when this uh thunderstorm hit and it was it was it was nice it was just so and a train was coming through at just that point as well coming along the mississippi and i mean we have so many beautiful spots around here where one can spend a weekend Sometimes you just have to put it all away and sit in your swing at the monkey bar and listen mm-hmm. to the rain and the train. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's exact. And and, and before <laughs> earlier than that on on Saturday morning, I um I sent Sherry a text cuz I I wake up long before her and I usually just wait for her to wake up. Instead, she woke up to a text from me saying, "Hey, I'm in the hot tub. Get out here before the thunderstorm comes because the first wave of thunderstorm, I woke up, it was sunny and beautiful at five in the morning, about six 30 or something like that. I'm like, there might be a thunderstorm coming. And, and I just changed the water in this hot tub. And can I explain the difference between a clean, fresh, uh, hot tub full of water versus what it's like after two weeks with the grandkids using the hot tub? <laughs> Um, can we just connect the dots I, ourselves? We well, we laugh about it because I mean, their their parents, our two daughters, you know, know know very well my frustrations when they were teens. I would be taking that garden hose to clean out the hot tub filter, you know, in between uh, water batches, and the glitter and the, all, all the other Bath and Body Works projects, you know, or, you know, products that would come washing out of there. It's just and now instead it's just kind of dirty because the one kid was you know chasing crayfish in the river all day and you know there was like a beach at the bottom of it in terms of the sand and everything. There's nothing like when you change that out and it's just fresh whether it's a, a hot tub or if you've got a swimming pool or whatever you've got. Man, fresh supply of water is always the best. Your your family would have glitter in the filter. My family would just have mud. Yeah, that's the difference between having daughters and sons. <laughs> yep. So, so yeah, that's when I said to <laughs> Sherry, I'm like, if you want clean, fresh water, you got to come now before the before the next thunderstorm comes in here. Uh, look, we we know what kind of a weekend it, it then became. Um, I was out to dinner with friends when you know the the news of the shooting in in Pennsylvania first came in. Uh, Kristen, by nature of what you do and what you know, what kind of an advocate you've been you are not a stranger to threats or concerns about you know some of the darkest people that are among us i am sure that the news of what happened in pennsylvania on saturday night um didn't just roll off your back shall we say i think we have all been shaken by this no matter even though we are a very politically divided country right now no matter which side you're on political violence is never the answer. It should never be taken to the point where physical harm happens. And we see this sometimes, you know, not not to this degree, this is obviously historic and shocking and so bad for so many reasons. But even now, you know, we've had a day to process and think about it. I know that the Biden campaign just went on pause. We received information to just take a break. We had parades planned the following day and we decided to sit it out and just you know think about what's important and how we can focus on bringing people together and bridge those divides instead of continuing to create that that division that's separating us and that's making it so hard for so many of us right now Uh, it really is because of the the number of people who have decided to to normalize that kind of rhetoric or even just um again, just kind of shrug off the, the violence. Uh, you know, it just, it just sets the stage for the, the next time through. And yet having said that, I, I do believe like you, that there is common ground to be found with, mm-hmm. with people who, how do I, how do I put this the right way? Uh, I've said this about my friends and neighbors here in Chippewa County who are either leaning Republican or, or quite Republican. We, we, we like to debate. We like to have disagreements. It would never lead, never would it lead to violence. And 
So that's what I'm saying is we just want to get back to the point where we can have a good disagreement in this country. That's when mm-hmm. we're at our best. Not when we're all singing Kumbaya together, but when we're having a good conversation. You don't agree with everything that the person you love the most in the world believes. Like disagreement is normal. So for me, I think felt like this was an opportunity to reach out to some people who I have so much common ground with, but maybe politically we disagree, just to make sure they're okay. I texted a friend of mine who's at the Republican National Convention with the Republicans. She is a big supporter of Donald Trump. We know where each other stands. She knows I'm running for U.S. Congress. We've known each other for decades. She's okay. But it meant a lot to her that I reached out, and it was important to me to do that. And, you know, we can all do that because... Ultimately, we're all neighbors, we're all humans, and we all need that connection. Yeah, I mean, there are so many times that I think any any two people, would one would stop for the other and help them change a flat tire and never even think to ask, well, before I help you out, you know, are you a Republican mm-hmm. or a Democrat? That's, that's not how we work here, which is where mm-hmm. we're going to jump off now and switch gears to the things that we can disagree on and do so in a... Uh, rather spirited way, because we're going to talk about Republican Congressman Glenn Grothman, who makes a lot of speeches on the floor of the House of Representatives and uh, made made another one last week. And look, Glenn Grothman has in the past expressed his, shall we say, lack of appreciation for feminism and the things that he thinks have destroyed the, you know, the American family. It's just that he, the way he put it last time around uh, a week or so ago, got some national attention because it's let's just, let's play a little glenn Grothman, shall we i ask people what's different about today what are the problems today uh i think the number one thing is they feel the breakdown of the family and when i ask them why they think there was a breakdown of family maybe they say vaguely a, a decline in the importance of religion but actually there are people who all along wanted to destroy the family okay if you look in the 60s the feminist movement, Kate Millay, was anti-family. A goal of the feminist movement was to get the man out of the family. Uh, um, Angela Davis, you know. Let's play stop. <laughs> I, think, I think we can stop it right there. With, with Let's go back two points here. Um, I'm not aware of anybody who wants to break down a family. I'm not aware of anybody who wanted to take men out of the equation. Here's what I'm aware of. I'm aware of things that were done in the 60s that helped get women out of abusive marriages. No-fault divorce, more more communication about domestic violence and how it's wrong, and make it so that if women wanted to leave an abusive relationship with their kids, it didn't mean a trip to the poorhouse. That's mm-hmm. not breaking up the family. That's strengthening the core of a family without the abusive partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm left listening to him and thinking, why? Hey, and that's my personal experience, Pat. I mean, that actually happened in my life. My mom was in a situation where, you know, women couldn't have bank accounts back in the day. And my father was an abusive alcoholic. She needed for us to leave for our own safety. And she didn't have that option because of what was happening in this country. So exactly what you said, it took her a hell of a lot of courage and support. Thankfully, she had family support. So we were able to do what we needed to do to be safe. But I mean, for Glenn Grothman to have this like, this fantasy idea of what it was like, this mythology of the 60s that's so Ozzy and Harriet, that's just really not a reality. No, it, it, and it rarely was. And l- now let's get back to the things that we know we can disagree about. Uh, Glenn Grothman used the phrase in in that uh, floor speech that he made um, about you know the, the goodies for mom, and that moms could make you know thirty forty thousand dollars. And so, what did they need a man for? I think mm-hmm. it is absolutely fine if we want to disagree on the level of public support that somebody should get. We heard from Tommy Thompson earlier. We can disagree on what is the right amount of, you know, working hours that somebody should have if they want to qualify for, for, um, you know, 
payments, you know, things that, that we used to call welfare. Um, you know, Leash Saunders writes in, says, I have said this many times, no fault divorce saved my life and the lives of my children. She says, yes. we grow when we disagree. We all continue to learn, you know, so true. It is. Um, so we can have those debate. I'm, I'm good with those debates, you know, but to, to just disparage all feminism, I think is to really miss the message of what, it, why it was, why it, it came to be in the first place. And as the mom of four boys, I ran this statement by my kids and they all just shrugged like this doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> we have to envision a future where we move forward and there is equality and we can have conversations with each other, not this going back to the 60s. I talked with one of Glenn Grothman's uh, constituents yesterday in his 20s and he then asked, are we going back to lead paint? Because that's what I would be using to paint fire trucks in the 60s. So, you know, like you don't get to just pick and choose. There is no magical going back. No, there isn't. And frankly, that is whether folks like that want to admit it or not. That is what they want is to go back to they, the attack on what they call the regulatory state means that we would see a return to dangerous products, maybe not lead paint itself, but other things that, you know, would not get the review that they would normally get. So when you want to go back, you want to say, oh, it's, it's all, it's all red tape and regulations and goodies. No, they're protections. They're protections for women, protections for consumers, protections for workers, protections for the environment. And again, let's debate over the level of it, but please don't tell me it shouldn't exist because mm -hmm. I mean, then you're just showing off your privilege. Yeah. And he did say it. He said it very clearly. Mm -hmm. It's on Up North News, TikTok. <laughs> I mean, it is, he yep. literally says, we need to go back to the 60s. And <laughs> before he says that, he says, I hope the media picks up on this. So yep. here we are. Here we are. I'm ha happy to oblige, Glenn. Uh, you know, served with him in the state Senate. Happy to amplify what he's got to say this time around. Uh, let's pause here because it's time for today's history lesson. I think we'll be joined by Selena Heller from Up North News and carry along on this Monday morning, live from Lake Wissota on the Civic Pia Radio Network. There's some some folks like did we appreciate them enough in their prime and linda ronstadt is one of the first that comes i hear that voice now and there's just nothing like it linda ronstadt was uh born this day in 1946 which makes her 78 years old today um her music career started as lead singer of the folk trio the stone ponies later as a solo act her her backup band greg was pretty good right uh they they, they had some you know, they had some talents Don Henley, Glenn Fry, <laughs> Never yeah. heard of them. Yeah, would, would go on and start their own little band called the Eagles. So happy birthday to Linda Ronstadt. Selena Heller joins us as well for today's history lesson. How are you doing? I'm well. All right. Well, we, we found Kristen in Eagle River. We talked about uh, me bar hopping through Prescott. Uh, what about your own, your own weekend? Any highlights? Oh, well, gosh. The Northern Wisconsin State Fair. We had a day there. Mm -hmm. Uh we watched uh, the new Despicable Me 4 movie, so that was fun. Today we're going camping. Camping? So, tent? Yeah. Camp oh, wait, you've got a, a pop-up, right? A little pop-up, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Did you really say you dressed up the cat as a minion? Yes, I wish I had the outfit down there. I, because we've been looking forward to this movie since we the, it was announced. So we oh, all said we were decked out in minions attire even whiskers <laughs> oh that's funny um yeah i i, I in, in getting ready for the movie we actually did not end up taking the the grandkids to go see it but uh i, I did want to at least make sure to get the proper uh alarm for them so i think somewhere on here on my phone i've got the <laughs> You'd be amazed how teen teenagers really respond to that, you know, <laughs> when you set that for them. So I would I, respond to that. Oh yeah, so I got to. So I got to go. We got to go see that movie at some point here. Happy seventy uh, second birthday to David Pack, lead singer for Ambrosia. 
No, it's not Yacht Rock Friday. But you're going to feel like it could be by the time we get done with all the music today throughout the course of the morning. Uh, David Pack was born in Huntington Park, California. And we'll hear another Ambrosia song later on today. There's more than one Ambrosia song? Oh, yeah. There were you know three, four of them that were out there. Yes, absolutely. Happy 73rd birthday to Jesse Ventura, 38th governor of the state of Minnesota <laughs> and wrestler and actor. <laughs> and still, I can't figure out how the heck he got elected, but it was it was a fun little show while it lasted. Uh, happy 71st birthday to disco queen Alicia Bridges. I know it might be a little too early for this, but go ahead, give your shoulders a little shimmy. It's okay. Never too early. Yep. <laughs> Native of Lawndale, North Carolina, Alicia Bridges is 71. Um, Milwaukee Bucks, Damian Lillard, 34 years old today. Same. How do you feel about this, Greg? On this day in 1996 was the Nickelodeon premiere of Keenan and Kel. With the theme song, Aw, Here It Goes from Coolio. Keenan Thompson's been a part of our lives now for 28 years. Um, Between was, Keenan, Kel, and SNL. Keenan, Kel, SNL, Good Burger, That's All. Uh, the, the sketch show he was on before Keenan and Kel. And he was in The Mighty Ducks. He's been in our lives for nearly like 35 plus years. Wow. Yeah. Guy's got some staying power, you know? Yeah. And, and appears to have come out the other side normal yeah. so far, so far mm-hmm. as we can tell. On this day in 1997, Sarah McLaughlin released her fourth album, Surfacing, which featured this hit single. I do believe I failed you. Yeah, okay, the Yacht Rock disco phase of the segment is over. I know I've let you down. The album would go on to sell 8 million copies here in the U.S., uh, on this day in 1979, President Jimmy Carter gave his infamous malaise speech, where I don't believe the word malaise was actually used in the remarks, but was used so often to describe it, basically saying during the energy crisis, you know, we, we all need to be a bit more responsible. And Americans responded by saying, uh, no, we're going to go vote for Reagan. We He's promising us everything, so we're, we're going to go that way. On this day in 2003, AOL Time Warner disbanded Netscape. Who's old enough to remember Netscape? Not Greg? Me. Okay. <laughs> what, What Greg? Oh, I was raising my hand to be like, I rem- I'm sorry, I misheard that. I thought you said, yeah, I remember Netscape. <laughs> okay. I not know if that meant you actually fiddled around with it. Because remember the CDs for Netscape and AOL? They were like everywhere. Oh, yeah. You know, trying to get you to learn these get things. A and a thousand then- free hours. There's not a thousand hours in a month. It's- I know. <laughs> Uh, oh, good. Here I spent the first part of the show just trashing Twitter, completely forgetting today's Twitter's birthday. Happy oh. birthday, you beautiful dumpster fire. <laughs> Twitter was launched this day in 2006. And I regret to inform you all that on this day in 2012 was when we were first exposed to and forever haunted by this video and song by Psy. Open Gangnam Style. And watch Pat's head go. <laughs> Come on, Pat. I got a, he- I got a headache Welcome now. Welcome Gangnam Style. Get up. Let's see it. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> see, on the National Day calendar. I'm sorry, Selena. That was a quick no. <laughs> yeah, that was a very, that's a very quick hard pass from me. Um, today is National I Love Horses Day or celebration of the horse or day of the horse. It's got a few different names to it. We love uh, horses in this house. How, what's that? We love horses in this house. Yes. You are a horse. <laughs> yes. A, a horse household. <laughs> Kristen, did I ever ask if you or the boys were riders? I uh, have, I love riding horses, but there just aren't that many opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot yeah. of, a lot of work, a lot of work. A lot um, of work. <laughs> when, when my older daughter wanted to learn to ride, we, purposefully chose a, a place uh it's called amber farm here in chippewa where they have a no princesses rule so it's like you're not just here to ride you clean up all the muck you do you do all the work you know before you get a chance to ride and i think that was definitely the better way to go this is global hug your kids day 
It's Developmental Disabilities Professionals Day. It is National Gummy Worm Day. It's National Orange Chicken Day. Again, weird combination, gummy worms on your orange chicken. And finally, Greg, what month is this? <laughs> it's the... Are we, uh, we aware of our lasagna? 15th day of Lasagna <laughs> Awareness Month. It Thank continues. You. Yes. Just in case you weren't before, now you are aware of <laughs> lasagna. Aware. aware of lasagnas. <laughs> Coming up, uh, Selena Howe is going to tell us more about the story she's working on for Up North News. Kristen, have a lot of fun camping in beautiful Eagle River. Thank you. Have and, a great day, guys. Guys, enjoy. We'll hear, and then we'll have Deborah Cronmiller from the League of Women Voters all coming up on Up North News Radio. Talking, you're talking, you're talking.